So to start this, we're going to separate a couple eggs. So go ahead and crack it on the edge of your ramekin right in the center, break it in half, and then just trade the yolk back and forth between the shells, and all the white will just separate and drop to the ramekin below. It really is that easy. Just be careful because we're doing a meringue. You don't want any yolk in the white. Okay, so be careful. So you're going to separate two eggs. You can set that aside. And then the other thing you want to do ahead of time is butter and sugar your ramekin. We're going to take some melted butter. We're going to paint the inside of a ramekin. You're ideally going to use eight ounce size ramekins for this. These were closer to seven, but they still worked. Once you've buttered the inside, go ahead and toss in a spoon of sugar and just rotate the ramekin around until the sugar has coated the entirety of the inside. You pour the excess in the other. And once both of those are buttered in sugar, just leave them on your sheet pan and those will be ready for the batter later. Speaking of which, let's start the batter. And if you've always been scared of making souffles, you're going to be shocked how simple this is. So in a small pan over medium low heat, we're going to put some melted butter and some flour. We're going to take our freakishly small, freakishly small wooden spoon and start stirring that together. We're basically making a little roux. And we're just going to cook that over medium low for about two minutes until it looks something like that. At that point, we're going to dump in some cold milk. All right, give it a stir. And if you're tempted to switch to a whisk here, do not. Stick with a wooden spoon or a spatula because what's going to happen, this is really going to thicken up and it will stick inside your whisk. It might not look great at the beginning, but it will smooth out. Don't worry. Just keep stirring. And eventually when that heats through, it's going to thicken up significantly and kind of pull away from the pan like that. And that's all you need to do. That's done. That's ready. Stop. Turn off the heat. Transfer that into a mixing bowl. And we will start to add the rest of the magical ingredients. The first of which, freshly grated orange zest. All right, accept no substitutes. And then, of course, we need some of this. The star of the show, Grand Marnay. It is an orange-flavored cognac. Incredibly lovely stuff. And yes, it is a freakishly small bottle. It's finger-sized. All right, but we don't need too much. So we're going to pour some of that in. We're going to take our spatula, and we're going to mix that thoroughly. And again, stay away from the whisks here. Even though it takes an extra minute, use your spatula. Mix that until smooth. At that point, you're going to dump in your two reserved egg yolks. Go ahead and mix that in. And then last but not least, we're just going to put a couple drops of vanilla extract. And that's it. Believe it or not, the base of our souffle is done. All it needs now to achieve liftoff is egg whites. So we're going to make a little meringue here. So go ahead and dump your two egg whites into a very clean large bowl. You're going to want to use your biggest, most bulbous whisk. So you're going to start beating those egg whites. And don't get out the electric mixer. You're cooking this in front of your valentine. you got to do it by hand. It's actually to your advantage to break a little sweat. It will actually release pheromones into the air. Oh yeah, we need all the help we can get. So whisk it by hand. And all we're trying to do is get it to this stage. It thickens enough where the drips off the whisk stay on the surface for like a half second. See that? So no peaks yet, but it is thickening significantly. At that point, we're going to put in half the sugar. Half the sugar, sprinkle it in. We're going to whisk that until it starts to thicken and get glossy. And those little ribbons of white that fall off the whisk are going to stay on the surface for maybe a second or two. All right, it's going to look like that. All right, you see that? At that point, you can dump in the rest of the sugar. And then we're going to keep beating that until what I call the shaving cream stage. So we do not want stiff, stiff, dry peaks here. We want very glossy, shiny, soft, supple peaks. So keep beating it until this happens. You can pile up a whole bunch of the meringue and it kind of looks like shaving cream. So it does hold a shape, but it is still very soft, very supple, and may I add, extremely sensual. So when that meringue is to the shaving cream stage, we're going to go ahead and put half into our mixture. We're going to fold that in, although I'm not being too gentle with this first half. We're basically just lightening the batter. So go ahead and stir it in, fold it in. Do not worry about being too rough. And once that first half is mixed in, go ahead and dump in the rest of it. And then we can fold a little more carefully. And all folding is, is taking your spatula, scraping it across the side and bottom, and then bringing it up over the top, all right, rotating your bowl. So you're going to want to use long, slow, deep strokes for this. Sliding your spatula underneath and around the side, pulling batter up from the bottom and up over the top. And you keep repeating that until the egg whites disappear into your mixture. All right, so once it's all mixed in, stop. Transfer that into your two ramekins. And then do as I say, not as I did. You want to stop about a quarter inch from the top. That will give you a more perfect rise in the oven, as you'll see. But I was greedy, and quite frankly, I'm not scared of crazy-looking souffle tops. So I filled mine all the way up to the brim, and you'll see the dangers of that in a second. At that point, you're going to place those in the center of a preheated 400-degree oven for exactly 16 minutes, or until they look like this. By the way, make sure your valentine is in the kitchen when you're doing this. You do not want to miss hearing all those involuntary sounds of pleasure as you pull this out of the oven. And right here, you can see why you don't fill them all the way up. Part of it will invariably attach to the edge as it rises, and it won't rise straight up. So that's what's going to happen if you overfill. Of course, a lot of people think, and I'm one of them, that that looks really cool too. But if you do want the perfect straight flat tops, just don't fill so high. And then unlike most desserts we do here, do not let this cool. Put it right onto a plate. You want to line the plate with some kind of napkin like I did. By the way, you guys making this for your ladies, try to find doilies. Women love the doilies. I think they consider it a type of plate lingerie. All right, but a napkin will work. We're going to finish it off with some powdered sugar because it looks cool. And that is done. Grand Marnay Souffle. And if you do make that in front of your Valentine, they really, really should be impressed. And if they're not, quite frankly, you're with the wrong Valentine. 
Now, as far as eating this, you can just dig right in. Not a problem. Just like that. It is amazing. Warm, moist, fragrant. Just incredible. If you've never eaten a souffle, the texture is hard to describe, but ethereal comes to mind. So you could eat it that way, but you're not going to. You're going to do this. You're going to take a spoon. You're going to plunge it down into the center to prepare the opening, which you're going to fill with creme anglaise sauce. And I'll tell you how to make that on the blog post. I will be doing a video for that, but you don't even really need a video. It's super simple. So check the blog post for that. You're going to pour some of that cold sauce in the center, and then you really do have something spectacular. The contrast of that cold, creamy sauce and that hot, fragrant orange sponge is just unbelievable. Almost literally impossible to describe. And here's a better angle. You can see the amazingly fine texture of that souffle. It's just so airy and light, yet rich and decadent at the same time. So anyway, the great thing about souffles is they look so impossible to make and impressive. And yet, as you saw, they're really fast and easy to make.